Hi guys, it's Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here with my weekly wrap up. I got three books read this week and the first book I officially finished this week was my audiobook. This is a book that I've been listening to for the last few weeks. I'm a bit slower at the moment getting through my audiobooks as obviously I'm not kind of out and about as much as I used to be and I used to listen to audiobooks a lot when I was um, on my train commute and walking to and from the train to the office. So that isn't really happening as much anymore and when I go out for walks with the dogs, um, I've kind of said before, I generally actually don't listen to a lot of audiobooks or podcasts. I kind of like to take that time to be kind of free of like I, I guess I don't know noise in my ear or like information going into my brain I kind of use that time to just chill out a little bit and relax and not think so much and just enjoy the company of my dogs so the audiobook I finished was Death at the Ladies Goddess Club by Julian Leatherdale. This is a book that I'd never heard of before. The cover that just struck just struck me as I was scrolling through my library app one day so I decided to request it. And this is actually a kind of historical mystery um, novel set in 1930s Australia, which I found really interesting. I haven't read that many books set in historical um, Australia, and it's definitely something I want to read more of. And particularly this type of time period I found really, really interesting, because it's that time kind of between the First World War and the Second World War, and it's a little bit like 20s glamour, but not quite and there seemed to be a little bit of social unrest at the time between um kind of laborers and the upper class there and the frustrations felt by people who weren't being looked after as much by the government and this is explored a little bit in this novel following this um woman called joan who is a journalist but she really really wants to be a crime novelist and she is kind of obsessed with a little bit of like true crime like a lot of people these days if she probably would love all the true crime documentaries at the moment and she is just really fascinated with crime and she's always just had this kind of macabre interest in it and then she ends up being thrust into a kind of her own crime story when a woman in her building is brutally murdered and joan ends up taking some steps the day the body's discovered that ends up trusting her into this investigation into who could emerge this girl and she kind of thinks that the person who could be behind it might actually be in her life already. The majority of this I really really enjoyed. As I said I really liked the setting, I really liked the historical time it was set in, I liked learning more about Australia at the time. This is set in Sydney in particular and I really liked that for the most part. There were some bits that kind of left me a little bit a little bit not I wouldn't say bored but I wasn't as interested as much in it, things about this built like this big bridge that was being built in, in Sydney at the time and um and there was like this whole there was a massive chunk near the end that was all about this opening of this bridge and I actually just didn't care that much where I'm sure if you are Australian or if you're from Sydney that would actually be really interesting for you to read but for me not never having been to Australia never having been to Sydney and seeing this bridge it's a, seeing this bridge and not knowing that much about it it wasn't really that interesting. Joan is kind of a funny character. Her aspirations for her career you definitely have to respect and she is kind of living in an independent life that I really admired as well particularly that would it would probably be harder for her at the time. There's some mild drug use in this book and there are some interesting kind of um moments with kind of gang bosses. I guess what would pass is like Sydney mobsters at the time which was also just a little bit of fun uh, sprinkled in and a little bit of danger that gave like it kind of gave a tint of danger to the novel. There were some things that Joan did and some things that like some people that she trusted in the book that I just felt she was really stupid to do and it kind of annoyed me. I did feel like I definitely guessed I, d I thought I guessed a lot of this book but then it kind of did turn on its head near the end of it which gave me a surprise I was not expecting that but then that surprise and that reveal wasn't great for me I just thought it was a little bit it kind of it just flopped I think it was supposed to be this great big reveal but for me it flopped a little bit so overall I gave this a three out of five stars I did enjoy it and I do think it's a good audiobook read. Next book I finished this week was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and obviously I don't have it at the moment my dad is reading it because I have finished it and I have a full reading vlog and review of this book which I will leave linked so I'm not going to talk about it at all to say I really loved it I gave it four out of five stars and you can see my full review linked in below and please go and check that out if you haven't and then the last book I finished this week was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng this is the book I am um, that I decided to pick up for the Asian readathon which was happening um all of this month I had been hoping I would be able to participate in that readathon a little bit sooner but unfortunately I just didn't get the time to pick up the other books that I wanted I took a little bit longer reading some other books at the start of the month but this one I think was the group book for the, that readathon so I had it on my shelf so I decided I might as well pick it up uh, this week and take part in that so I'm really glad I was able to do that and take part in the readathon even at the very end of the month. It's set in Cleveland in newly called Shaker Heights which is a little bit like perfect almost too perfect everything is like really planned people have to kind of I guess go along with regulation a lot and the community is just they kind of 
pretend that everyone is really happy and everyone is perfect and there's never any trouble there. And then this artist called Mia, she moves to Shaker Heights one day with her daughter Pearl and she rents out this house from a woman called Elena Richardson. And Elena Richardson, she has, she has four teenage children herself and her children end up becoming friends with, with Mia's daughter Pearl. And, and a few months later, um, there ends up being this kind of disruption I guess in the community's peace when this family who ha are trying to adopt this Chinese baby end up in this kind of legal action against the, against the baby's birth mother who wants the baby back. She had originally abandoned the baby but now she wants her, her child back because she is in a better position now to be able to care for her child and this ends up being this legal battle with loads of people in the community on two different sides and Mia is kind of almost at the centre of it and she's kind of a big reason why the legal action is even happening in the first place and obviously Elena Richardson ends up kind of having a bit of a grudge against Mia and deciding that she wants to unearth Mia's secrets which could end up being a whole load of trouble for everyone. I have a little bit of like not mixed feelings about but it's one that I read really fast. I literally started it yesterday, finished it today. Um, I found it really easy to fly through and the discussions that are brought up in this book about kind of what makes a family, who has more of right to a child, the the birth mother or a mother that can actually provide for the child, who is the child better off with, um, the importance of a child growing up, being able to see itself see itself and the people around it and um, knowing its heritage and things that we're still talking about today almost like 20 years later after this book is set. The importance of being able to see yourself in media, in dolls, in stories and, and feeling like you belong and that you were accepted and you were loved. There's so many kind of like grey areas in this book that I think a lot of people would have loads of different opinions about and I definitely did it as well at different points in this book and there are parts in the book that I just felt so uncomfortable about because I kind of knew what my opinion was but then I didn't know whether I was wrong for that opinion and then someone else would say something I would agree with them and then I was just kind of be going back and forth about everything and it's just one of those things where there's never really a right or wrong answer. None of the characters in this book for me were likeable. I just didn't enjoy any of them and they all just really, really annoyed me. They were all just like self-righteous and to be honest, just like talked too much sometimes or not enough and I don't know, they just all irritated me and I don't know, particularly the teenagers. I don't know why, but the teenagers in this book just like really annoyed me and I think it's just something to do with like the media I've been consuming this week anyway. I've been watching um, Sweet Magnolias on Netflix, which is like this kind of small town American TV show that's supposed to be good for people who like Gilmore Girls and it's a little bit like Gilmore Girls, but I don't think it's as good and I don't think it's as funny. But the teenagers in that show, I don't know why, but they really irritate me and they're just really sulky. I was really hooked onto the book and I did find it really easy to read. I think the writing in it was really good. The um, conversation topics that made you think, I feel like it challenged my thinking as well, which I loved. And I will definitely be checking out uh, Celeste Ng's other book, which I think is Everything I Never Told You and any other book she has in the future. I also am really interested to watch the show for this book as well, because I think it'll be really, really good. Um, it sounds really good. Reese Witherspoon is in it, so she's brilliant. So I love her. And yeah, so if you've watch the show and read the book let me know if you've enjoyed the show if it if it lives up to the book if you think the book or the show is better would love to know that so that'd be really interesting to know so i gave this a four out of five stars did enjoy it everything i've read this week so far please let me know what you guys think down in the comments below i would love to know what you guys have read this week i hope you guys have had a lovely week and you are having a lovely weekend see you guys in the next video bye